This is not what I was intending to do today. But that's not up to me. Get your scriptures. The authorized version, the King James Version, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, Word of God. Read along with me. This is impromptu. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, will not depart from it. Have you noticed that it's getting very, very, very more difficult to witness unto people? You're given a glimmer of hope, and then it seems to vanish away, like in the twinkling of an eye or something like that, right? And when you see, see that and encounter that on numerous occasions, it's very easy to lose hope. It's really easy to say, well, I just don't want to do this anymore. It's really easy to become morose, hardened. Believe me, dude, it's really easy. It's really easy. Remember. Remember. If God still didn't have a purpose for you, dear saint, I believe, I believe that he would take you home. I truly believe that. Because our God is a jealous God. Atheists go crazy with that. They confuse envy with jealousy. Okay? It's like, you know, He made you. What Your belief on that is irrelevant. He made you. And He has every right. <laughs> the rights of God. I, it's a preposterous statement. But, so you, okay? He has every right. He created you. Whether you want to believe that or accept that or not is irrelevant. Like I've told you, you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to have to give an account to him. And man, but the worst is the ones. Like the one from the... Uh, uh, northwest coast of a certain island who knows and has chosen to go after Satan, to work for Satan. Those are the ones who are going to have it the worst at the great white throne of judgment. You atheists and stuff like that. You people who are knowingly, knowingly doing contrary to the scriptures and what God says and promoting it. But, as I said, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, doesn't take a genius to figure out that things are getting far more difficult. People will argue this. I've encountered this. Well, it's like, well, it's always been hard. you got to remember, since the inception of the Jesuit order, the Jesuit order, the Jesuits, are daring, disciplined, subtle men. They wear away at the stones, okay? For literally centuries, picking, 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 picking. A little here, a little there, okay? And the climactic end will come sooner or later. What is that climactic end for the Jesuit? that they may establish a kingdom. So one person may rule the entire world for a short time. And through that constant wearing away of the stones, now I'm using America as my example, but see, this is indigenous to any country under heaven. It's getting harder. It's getting more difficult. 
And brethren, we have to be on our guard. We have to be on our guard about becoming bitter, about becoming cold. You don't, you don't want to cast away an opportunity that the Lord has provided you because you were bitter. I spare you. We're, we're told to be instant in season and out of season. It's really easy to become bitter. It's really easy to lose hope, especially when you pray. When you do as you are supposed to, as you do as we are called to do. They toss it away as a light thing. And this, through this constant wear, wearing away of the stones, we have a society. We have a people. We have a populace. I'm going off of the American bent, okay? But we have a people, a populace, a society, prepared. Brethren, you and I, we could be called up at any moment. And this society, this people, are already conditioned. Sin is in. If it feels good, do it. Evil is good, and good is evil. And devils run rampant. And what is people want you to believe the faith that was once delivered to the saints is? Is a smorgasbord of blah. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Ecclesiastes 7, 23 on verse 29. All of the, and this is, you can call this the diary, if you will, <laughs> of um, King Solomon. All this have I proved by wisdom, the fear of the Lord. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Galatians chapter 6, one verse. Galatians chapter 6, one verse. I was not expecting to do this today. Galatians 6, verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Now think about that. For if a man think himself to be something, didn't Solomon? Hmm? He had everything at his disposal, okay? True wealth, gold in tons, literally, tons. He had a throne made out of ivory. He drank out of gold. If he wanted that woman... He'd get that woman, which was his problem. There was nothing he couldn't get. And what did it come? What did he say at the end of it all? What did what did Solomon, one of the wisest men on the face of God's green earth, what did he say at the end? Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion. Of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Now dispensationally. Salvifically. We do not have to keep the commandments today to be saved. Stay saved and be right with God. We don't. We've talked about that in depth. Okay. If you're going to come here and be a jerk about that. Just go pound some sand. Okay. Never never taught that you have to keep the commandments. It's, you know. Watch the Mark the Messenger video. Okay. I might put that in the description box. But anyway. 
But notice where it starts. Fear God. You know, we're all going to give an account. We're all going to give an account. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's what Solomon... Vanity of vanities. Self to preach. All is vanity. But see, in, in here, in verse 23, in uh, chapter 7, all this have I proved by wisdom. I said I was wise, but it was far from me. The wisest man who spake of trees and these things towards the end of his life, where was... It was far from him. Why? Because look at how Solomon ended. He ended in sin. I believe Solomon is up there. I, I do. When, when we go up there, I believe Solomon is up there. A lot of people say that now. Uh, I believe he is. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to argue that. Okay? We'll, we'll find out when we get there. But you look at how Solomon ended with a thousand women. He built uh, pagan idols onto the gods of the wives that took away his heart. So, all this have I proved by wisdom. How would he prove it by wisdom? Because he knew that it's better to fear God than to be involved with this nonsense. Okay? I said, I will be wise. I'll fear the Lord. But it was far from me. Yeah, as he was shacking up with all, like a thousand women from all nations under heaven and making idols to their little g-gods. Mm -hmm. this, this, this was Solomon, the superstar, the hot shot. Solomon, ow, that hurt. Solomon, who could leisurely, I imagine, stroll through his garden and say, I like that woman. I want that. You bring that woman over here. Ooh, look at that fine woman. Okay? Hmm. He, had a, he had everything at his disposal. And what does Satan offer you people? All this will I give you. If you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Because this is given unto me to give it to you, whoever I want. Verse 24 in Ecclesiastes 7. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? Think you know something, huh? Solomon knew something, but towards the end of his life, all he knew was what? To fear God and keep his commandments, because you know what? Every one of us is going to give an account. Mm hmm. Verse 25. I applied mine heart to know and to seek out wisdom. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding, okay? And to know the reasons of things. And to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. You know what? Here's a, here's a news flash for you. You don't have to experience something to know, especially if you have a perfect standard on what to judge. You don't have to experience something to know that it's evil for you, okay? Okay? I know of men, I know of some women, who can look me in the eyes like, well, Brad, I've never taken a drug in my life. Good. They don't have to experience to know uh, that uh, dr certain drugs are vile and evil. I'm talking to like cocaine, heroin, the pharmaceutical drugs. I've known grown men, grown, macho, biker men, laden with tattoos, who would shoot you because you looked at them funny, okay? Brought to a piece of bread. Because they were addicted to oxycotton. The poor man's heroin, they call it. I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and to know and the reason of things. 
Why are the people acting like this? Hmm? Why? <laughs> Why? Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. A continual wearing away of the stone, picking, gnawing, excuse me, which the Jesuits are good at. And those who are of the Jesuit order do those very same tactics, don't they? They gnaw. They're persistent. They're disciplined. Every tactic that the Jesuits are known for, certain individual does. Such as the gathering of information, like the Jesuits do, proposing, pretending to be a saint by going after certain satanic sects. S-E-C-T-S, -E thank you. But see, that's an example of this wearing away of the stones that has brought about what we see today. But you gotta remember, people, you don't always have to know the reason of things to realize, especially when we have a perfect standard. I don't need to know why you're messed up, okay? I know because of the scriptures and because I judge according to the scriptures, you're crazy. You're messed up. Why? Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out, but you know what? I don't need to. All I need to know is, this says one thing, you're doing another, this is right, you are wrong, go away. Okay? But, Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11. 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes, but know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart. Well, see, well, sorrow, well, hey, like Oscar Wilde said, hey, the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give into it, right? Sin causes sorrow. The, the wages of sin is death. Okay? Solomon is not talking about giving into your sin so your sorrow will go, go away. No. What does it say? Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Have you ever noticed with the uh, sodomite agenda... Now, this is not the case for all, but the direction that Satan takes this with media and Disney and Disney. I, I believe our brother, uh, Perfect Standard, KJV, has um, things on Disney. Check out his stuff. Uh, but, um, yeah, like Disney and stuff like that. Have you ever noticed that the sodomite agenda is geared toward the youth? It's very cosmetic. This is not the case for all these people. No, it's not. But it's very cosmetic. Just like sin. You know, in Ezekiel 28, all the precious stones were the covering of the anointed cherub. It looks so beautiful. It feels so good, right? But the wages of sin is death. And Solomon. Solomon. Ecclesiastes 2, Ecclesiastes 2, 1 and 3. I said in mine heart, go to now. He wanted to find out the reason of things. Why, why are y'all thinking this whine? Why are y'all thinking this debauchery? Why are you thinking all these, this putting of wicked things before your eyes? What's so good? about this stuff that you call good. What's so, what's so good about it, huh? I said in my heart, in my heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. Mm, pleasure. Hey, genius, you figured it out, right? That pleasure is a fleeting thought. 
that dance and struts his hour upon the stage and then is heard of no more. It is the tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Pleasure is that. Last for a moment. It's like a drug. you got to keep refilling it. But joy, the joy of the Lord is eternal. That can never be taken from you. But see, you have to go to the Lord on his terms to get his joy. And what, is, what does the guy say who could have anything and behold, this is, all, this is also vanity. <laughs> it's not funny. I, I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? <laughs> Madness. I remember when I was young, before I was saved, obviously, Oh, I forget what drug I had taken, and I just went into a uncontrolled laughing fit. I, I forget what it was. I, I was like writhing on my back porch while some guy who was also on drugs like I was just watched me as I writhed on my porch laughing. I forget. I couldn't breathe. I was, you know, snot bubbles, everything. It was horrible. It was madness. Okay. And a fool that laughs at death. Ha ha! Like the horse who, you know, ha ha! He charges it in. Ha ha! The fool has said in his heart, there is no, uh, there is no God. Hmm. I sought in mine heart to give myself on to wine. Oh, there we go, wine. Wine. Which cheereth man's heart. Which has truly, truly good health benefits if used in moderation. That, that cannot be denied. Is it real wine? Well, isn't all around wine real? No. There is synthetic, made from synthetic GMO grapes. There is. There is a wine that is natural. But there is also wine that comes from a certain woman who is a hua. And her wine is deadly poison. It's the poison of asps. What is her name? Oh, her name is Roman Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Mm. I saw it in mine heart to give myself unto wine. Yet... Acquainting mine heart with wisdom. Roll this around. I, I don't have a better example, so I don't. Saints who smoke cigarettes. Saints who drink. Drink to excess. Yeah, but... I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine. This is evil. This is killing me. I'm addicted to it. Yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, I know that I'm going to give an account for this because the Lord lives within me. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So I know I'm going to give an account for this. So I'm acquainting myself with what I'm doing, but yet I'm still doing it. Very dangerous balance. And unfortunately, unless you're some perfect creature from an island from the northwest coasts, you know. <laughs> I, I ain't even going there. I, yesterday I tried to do a video. I got so irate. Anyway, anyway. I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom. And to lay hold on folly. Let's see what this is about. So I can experience it. How'd that work out for some of us? I sought in mine heart to give my, myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and I lay hold and to lay hold on folly.
And when someone is held in reputation for wisdom and honor and he lays hold on a little folly, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. Verse 25 of chapter 7 again. I applied mine heart to know, to experience. Okay? There's knowledge of knowing, knowing something. But there is also a knowing as an experiencing. Okay? For example, when the Lord says to Abraham, Now I know that you fear the Lord. He knew that. What is he talking about? He experienced the faith, the fear, the trust. In Abraham, when he was about to sacrifice his only son, his only begotten son, Isaac. Okay? It wasn't that God didn't know what was going on. It was an experience. A relational experience. Same thing. I applied my heart to know. Not just here, but to experience it. And like I said. Romans chapter 6. Romans, come on, come on. Romans chapter This is very impromptu, okay? This was not what I was planning on doing today, okay? Not at all. Not at all. Romans chapter 6. <laughs> Verses 20 on to verse 23. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. But now be made free from sin, and become servants to God, not sinless, like you don't sin anymore. Okay? Ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin, your payment for sin, is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what the wages of my sins are? As a lost man, death. My heart problems. I got this, you need to know this. I got like this bump on my foot that's probably cancer. Why was that? Because as a lost man, I let my feet take me to places I shouldn't go. God can save anybody. God can forgive anyone, anything. There's nothing off limits. He's not going to force you. But that doesn't mean that the consequences are going to be taken away from you. It doesn't. It doesn't. He can do it. He can. Oh, I'm sure. He can do whatever he wants. But that just because he saves you and forgives you, and you are his own, that doesn't mean that he's not going to allow you to suffer the consequences of what you did before he saved you. Even though you're doing your best to live right, health-wise and whatnot, I'm using myself as an, as an example. Okay? Again, Verse 25 in Ecclesiastes 7, I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. Verse 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman. Don't get ahead of me. Whose heart is snares and nets. Oh, don't you think that Solomon, you know. I've seen women that are so gorgeous. And today, they're walking around like whores. Okay? Painted up to the moon. Okay? Fake. Our hearts are snares and nets, nests. On the outside, they're gorgeous. On the inside, they're putrid. Rank, vile. Verse 
If you were blind, you would have an advantage because you would be able to go with what you hear. Faith cometh by hearing. And you wouldn't be able to judge on what you see. I don't want to go blind. But who was that? There was that, um, not poet. Oh, somebody help me with this. Uh, she, um, um, the hymn writer lady. I can't remember her name. Help me someone. Where she was blind and she said, you know, the first thing I'm going to see it with my eyes is the face of my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Hmm. Oh, what woman might Solomon be making reference to? Proverbs 5? Verses 3 on verse 5. For the lips of a strange woman drop as on honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Chapter 7, Proverbs 7, chapter 7, verses 24 and verse 27. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. You've been deceived. You think it's, it feels good to it. Sin is in. It's okay for a young man to be as skinny as a rail, look like a punk, act like that. I've, I've mentioned this in the previous video. These emo thing, ki things, kids. Uh, I've got a couple of them around here. They're, they're, it's like, at first you look, that's, that's a dude. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Let not thine heart decline to her way. Read Proverbs 7 today. Go ahead. Go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Well, how is that? How is that? Verse 18. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. God's not here. No one's going to know. Who well, else is it going to hurt? You know you want this. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Who is this woman? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism. And the influence of Satan through her. Here we are. See, there's a contrast. There's a contrast. See, that is the beauty of the woman, the men, of the harlot, adorned with all the precious coverings and stones. Huh? But the contrast, the true contrast, is the beauty of wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 8, verses 1 on to verse 5. Listen to, what, listen to how, how our Lord phrases this. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding, departing from evil, put forth her feminine voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. Look at Proverbs 7, verse 8. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Talking about the harlot, that's on every corner. Saying, come, come, you know you want this. A little isn't going to hurt. Well, wisdom 
standeth in the top of the high places of high places by the way in the places of the pass. She crieth at the gates before you get there, trying to stop you before you go. At the entry of the city, at the coming in unto the doors, unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom. You're going to give an account to the Lord. Your belief on that is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You're shocked when you stand before him who you rejected all your life. By the time you're standing before him at the great white throne, it's too late. O ye, under, o ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools who say in the heart there is no God, be ye of an understanding heart. Chapter 9, verses 1 under verse, oh, oh wait, 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 and verse 11 in uh, chapter 8 in Proverbs. For wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Chapter 9. Wisdom, verses uh, 1 and verse 6. Wisdom hath builded her house she hath hewn out her seven pillars. She, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, she hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine, which cheereth the heart of man. The wine of the harlot is the poison of asps. The wine of wisdom is sweet. Oh, so sweet. Healthy. And the wine is given little by little. Here a little, there a little. Because if you drink too much of it, you go blank. That's Isaiah 28. Go find it. She hath killed her beast. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn hither, turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, departing from evil, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, Jesus is the bread of life, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, behaving like you say in your heart there is no God, and live. And go in the way of understanding. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord. Her beauty, we can't comprehend it. Just get a little morsel of it. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 28. Oh, excuse me. Keep reading. Excuse, excuse me. Keep reading. Verse 26. No, uh, verse 26. <laughs> Let's read 26 again and continue. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. Verse 28. Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found. One man among a thousand. You come across someone who you would trust with the life of your wife, who you would trust with the life of your children. Praise the Lord he has given unto me, a sinner who is chief, 
the least of all men. My father has given me the blessing of having several brethren who I would trust with the life of my wife. You guys know who you are. For I hear Solomon says, one man among a thousand have I found. Kind of like with David and Jonathan, which people, these disgusting Christians, some of them will say, well, they were sodomized. You shut up and go to hell, you filth. No, 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 that was, those were kindred spirits who were, who were best friends. That's what that means. There was nothing perverse about that. Those are the types of people who go to, uh, you know, where it talks about ham, you know, ham sin. Okay. No, there's, yeah, just shush. But look at this. But a woman among all those have I not found. A woman among all those have I not found. Well, for starters, uh, you think Solomon was looking in the wrong places? Uh-huh. Okay. Our Lord said specifically, don't go out your kindred. Why? Because especially during under the law, Christ was coming of the seed of Israel, of the line of the Hebrews. He knew from whence he was going to come. Okay, but they, you know, they had hints that it was he was going to come from Judah and whatnot. Okay, from the line of David, obviously. Okay, but that's why, you know, he was like, stay within your kindred, because eventually the Mashiach was coming. But there again, too, also, what happened with Solomon when he went outside his kindred? Hmm? Okay, what is it? First Kings, Second Kings, chapter eleven. Second Kings, chapter eleven. About or or, or what? The one where it's like, uh, well, let's find that. Hold your place here. Hold, hold your place there. Where is that? I think it's. Um, I think it's yes. First Kings, chapter eleven. Verse one. On to verse two. But King Solomon loved many strange women. But a woman among all those have I not found. Hmm, could do you reckon that Solomon was looking in places he shouldn't have? But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, which it is surmised, and I also agree with this, that the daughter of Pharaoh is the base for the Song of Solomon. I believe that as well. I believe that as well. I believe of the, the daughter of Pharaoh. Pharaoh, an Egyptian. She was a Hamite. Okay? All right? A Gentile wife. Okay? It doesn't mean that the Hebrews are Hamites. Okay? Watch out for that heresy. Okay? But... Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Moab, of the Moabites and the Ammonites, children of Lot, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall, ye, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after, other, after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. That wasn't love, that was lust. That was lust. Solomon was looking in the wrong place, wouldn't you reckon? And today, in America, which is what I can base this off of, with the sexualization of these things, the kids... 
the children, the adults are trained to see a piece of meat with the sexualization of everything. That's why I say, someone who would, was blind today, now I, I don't want to go blind. There, are, there is beauty to behold. But if you were blind, think about this. In this context, what we're speaking about, then you would truly have eyes to see, wouldn't you? You roll that around in your head for a while. And of course, Satan did go to Eve. Why? Because Eve didn't see what God did. The weaker vessel, supposed to be the help meet. When you have a woman, when you have a woman, who is truly saved, truly a saint. What a treasure. What a treasure. Because the woman is the glory of the man. I know, I know a lot of women hate to hear that. I think about that stupid head, Christy Burke. You know, closet feminist. Not really a closet feminist, but... See, the woman is the glory of man. Man is the glory of God. Okay, That doesn't make woman less. Not at all. But remember, man, woman means taken of man. And, and as it saith, as it saith in Proverbs, Proverbs 31, Proverbs, excuse me, Proverbs, yeah, Proverbs 31, verses 30 on to verse 31. <laughs> that's funny, I turned to 13, and that's something funny, huh? Ha 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 Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. You know, unless you have uh, plastic surgery a lot, uh, this is a sagging skin suit, thermodynamics, everything breaks down. Even if you work out every day, like some do, and are more fastidious to keep your flesh tight and firm, it breaks down eventually. You know that bar, <laughs> I've seen this before. You know that barbed wire tattoo you get, little girl? Little boy, by the time if you live to see 60, it started here, it's going to be down here. <laughs> what? I got a tattoo of a, a butterfly once in my life when I was a kid, and now it's, it looks like Porky Pig. And tattoos are evil. Don't get them. If you've gotten them and you're saved, that's a different story, okay? We've, we've talked about that before, okay? Okay. All right. God is not, you know, there's nowhere in the New Testament at all that getting a tattoo is undone. Okay, that's sin, it's wickedness. Don't believe these Christians. It's okay, get a tattoo. Okay. To a certain select few that I have observed of even sleazy believists, I have heard even, even a few sleazy believists be like, yeah, don't get tattoos. Even. Even the vile, vomitous, filth, sleazy believists. I have seen a few of them even stand. No, don't get tattoos. Even them. So stay away from tattoos, okay? But favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. If you got a tattoo, then the Lord saves you. That's a different story. You didn't know. Now you do, okay? Totally different story. Okay? Totally different. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Why? Because she's not going to be dominating her husband. She's not going to be the boss. She's not going to be uh, combative. 
And if she is going to be combative with you, it's because you need it. That's a godly woman, Jack. To all you sisters who are, may every one of you who truly seek to be a helpmeet, may the Lord reward you. May the Lord reward you. Verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright. At the very beginning, man was created immortal, perfect, vegan, <laughs> or at least vegetarian, okay, sinless. He hath got set. But they have sought, sought, looked out for, Sought out many inventions. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Careful what you wish for. I said to my wife the other day, you know, we're talking about dreams. You know, all my dreams are coming true. God, oh. just seriously, just goosebumps. You can't see that. Goosebumps. The Lord allowed all my dreams to come true. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. Twenty nine and thirty one. Being filled. With all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Look at the Jesuit order. How they've invented torture devices. Look at their um, infiltrating devils. Invent out of the clear blue lies about people. We can go on all day about the inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents. Without understanding, departing from evil. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection, implacable unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. And 2 Corinthians chapter 2, just one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, just one verse. Verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I know there are brethren out there who are vehemently against these, and I understand. I understand. And you got to be on your guard because I, myself, you know. I myself watch video. We watch documentaries and stuff and things by the brethren. Keep eye on certain people and watch people also who I'm really concerned about, you know, but whatever. Got to watch it with these. Okay? Because what can happen? The devil will be allowed to tempt you. Why? Because if you've noticed here on YouTube those shorts, okay? Not the ones you're wearing, smart Alex. <laughs> I love you, brother. But you know those shorts, the little like one minute videos or whatever? Um, that can feed you things. And the exotic, flashing the whole world and all the kingdoms and all the glory of them in front of your face in a moment of time? Hmm. 
there's a beloved sister who, um, and I get it, who in order to get away from temptation, she has to turn this stuff off and be like, dude, I got to get away from it. Ah, I understand that. The other day, I, I checked my one email, um, the spam thing, uh, 999 spam, 999, it's like, wow, <laughs> wow, oh, wow, yeah, uh, yeah, it's like, whoa, dude, me, of all people, yeah, just incredible, incredible. But see, because of the wearing away of the stones, because of what has happened and what is going on, let's remember, it's harder for us today to witness unto the lost. Especially, and this I, this is indigenous in your country too. Praise the Lord, probably. Nowhere near as bad here in America. But this is something that goes across the board. Children today are the targets of the Jesuit. Everything, I mean, with the uh, media and the manipulation that's going on, it's all geared toward youth. Thin as in, okay? Talked about this yesterday with these uh, elderly women uh, trying to look like, they call them millennials, okay? Train up a child in the way they shall go. It's, it's difficult. But it isn't impossible. Because with God, all things are possible. Proverbs 30, verses 11 on to verse 17. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet not washed from their filthiness. It's like one kid. There's nothing wrong with me doing this. I kind of got, you know, puffed up. Not arrogant, but kind of like, you know, kind of to get a... He was a little scrawny, little thing. He, I thought he was a woman until I was about 10 foot away from him. I really did. And I told him that. It's like, kid, I thought you were a little girl. And I, and I got right in his face. Like, I thought you were a little girl. <laughs> I, I did. I, I purposely got, you know, kind of, you know, I, I will get confrontational if I have to be. If it helps to get uh, convey a point, I will. I'm, you know, I don't fret man much and never have, never will. But I will get confrontational. It's like, like I said, you know, I didn't know, you know, and he and the guy and the kid knew I was looking at him because I, I couldn't decipher whether or not I was looking at a boy or a girl. It's like, dude. You like what you see? I thought you were a little girl. What's wrong with you? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me being like this. You're just hating. There's a generation. Oh, how... Lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, <coughs> to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. You know, there are some of these wicked devils that when they go to insult you, at least they're colorful. <laughs> at least they're, it's like, okay, I got to check a dictionary. That you, you, you jerk, you know, that kind of thing. But some of these kids, they're like their mouth. They're out of their mouth proceed as things that you would think that is to be cast out in the draught. And they think, and people think, oh, it's so cute. Got an eleven-year-old and ten-year-old saying the f-bomb, and they're like, "Oh, that's so cute." <laughs> I 
The horse leech hath uh, two daughters crying, Give, give! I have a right to be this way. All things are lawful for you. Ah, can't deny that. Can't, we can't argue that. You have the free will. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You want to be like that? <laughs> Good luck. That's your problem. But yes, all things are lawful for you. All things are lawful for us saints. But not all things are expedient. Why? What does that mean? God's not holding it. Ow. God is not holding a gun at your head. Satan isn't go holding a gun at your head. You have the ability to make or break. You have the ability to choose or reject. I wouldn't say it's a right to walk around being a young boy looking like a little girl or vice versa. No, you, you don't have a right. You have the ability to choose, I should say. You have not the right. Excuse me. You have the ability to choose, I should have said. Excuse me. Because all things are lawful for you. You want to choose to defile what God gave you? That's your problem. Give it to me. I have the right to do this. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. The grave. The wages of sin is death. Lust. Covetousness. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I want, I want, I want. More, more, more. The grave. The barren womb. Guess what? You're a sodomite? Um, there ain't no children coming out of anyone's womb, is there? The earth that is not filled with water. Parched. Dry land, not sustained. Okay? The water of life springing out, you know, wash you with clean water. Out of his side came blood and water. Okay? Symbolizing nourishment. Earth. Earth. We're dirt. Earth. That is not filled with water. Man. Not being washed in the water, the milk of the word. And the fire that saith not, it is enough. Mark chapter 9. Interesting, the uh, golfing enthusiasts disappeared. Maybe they were working together. What a shock! Mark chapter 8. Oh wait, Mark chapter 9. Verses 43. On verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. For the fire saith not, it is enough. Hmm. Where their worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. Uh, you're not going to go to hell, burn for a while, then repent, and then that's, that's purgatory. That's veiled Catholicism. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Back to Proverbs 30. Let's finish that up. Verse 17. 
Come on, I was just there and I closed the scriptures. The eye that mocketh at his father. The order, the head of the house. And despiseth to obey his mother. Charity, nourishment. The ravens, an unclean bird, of the valley shall pick it out. And the young eagles, also an unclean bird, shall eat it. Son, don't give up. Again, like with yesterday's video, don't give up. Any of you, don't give up. It's hard. It's harder. People don't want to hear. We are warned about this in Scripture. Don't give up. You might have to give up on one, but don't give up on another. 2 Timothy chapter 3. What can we do? What can we do to avoid a hardened heart? To avoid our coldness? I'm, I, I'm the same way, dude. You know? You know, you can only be kicked at and spit on and mocked so much before he's like, Lord, oh, I just don't want to do this anymore. Come on. I can't. I don't want to do this. It's not working. It's not worth it. Praise the Lord he didn't say that about me. Praise the Lord he didn't say that about you. Hmm? Not that you were worth it, but that he didn't allow you to die as a lost man, but gave you every opportunity. Because you're lost and you die, <laughs> I can bet you assured. Not with the, not with every case, but you know you're living a life of wickedness, and the Lord. Have you noticed that those wicked devils will live longer than the just because the Lord is being merciful, long suffering to give them a chance. Hmm? But what do we do? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 17, and we will be done. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There are some devils out there who are so deceived in their, um, in their narcissism, in their sociopathic tendencies, that they actually believe that they are pulling one over on people. They are so self-deceived. And deceiving. It's, it's, it's full of wonder. But, you and me saints, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. In the spirit of truth, when he has come, he will guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. <laughs> And that from a child, maybe a suckling of days, or a child, a babe in Christ. Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The youngins today, if you can get, if there's a, a child who is so broken and will hear, praise the Lord. It takes patience on our part. Don't give up. Till the Lord tells you to, and you will know, you'll know. You'll know. Don't give up yet. You'll know. And when you when the Lord's like, okay, that one has been admonished, that one is now accountable. Like, you know, he said, Why are you crying for to Samuel? What why are you weeping for Saul? Okay. Okay, you've had okay, he he's done. Forget it. Come on, we got go go 
Go, I got one got one for you. I want you to anoint. Go, forget. Saul's done. He's made his choice. I could help him, but he's made his choice. Go over here. I was not expecting, <laughs> expecting to do this at all today. Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.